Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you and all are the Holy One, you and all are the Lord. You and all are the Most High, Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let's join in singing our psalm for the morning, which is a portion of Psalm 116. Please sing it along with me in unison. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me, the grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, 
live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the age for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now on that same day, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. 
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them with the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you once again that we can gather even in this virtual space to hear your word and to uh, listen to what you have to say to us. And we pray that you will give us a sense of uh, your being with us in this uh, way so powerfully that even as we sit in our own homes, your word can open our hearts and our eyes, and we can see you among us. Bless us, we pray, and now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Wouldn't you have loved to be there on that road to Emmaus on that first Easter afternoon, walking along with Cleopas and his unnamed friend, talking about all these things that had happened. That is a conversation I wish St. Luke had reported in more depth. What were they saying? What were they feeling? I want to know the gory details. But perhaps Luke's summary is enough to tell us what we really need to know. When Jesus comes along beside them, Luke says, they stood still looking sad not the Easter joy that we saw in the women who had come to the tomb that morning, not the astonishment of the 11 disciples who were trying to figure this all out. No, these, these guys, followers of Jesus, but not among the inner circle, these guys were just sad. So sad they were immobilized. They, they stood still looking sad. And the sadness is best expressed by the words that they utter, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. We had hoped. Can you think of three words that speak more pathetically of human disappointment and despair? We had hoped. And those are words that many of us have said a lot in these past few weeks and in many different contexts. I remember so well that Thursday night Lenten supper in mid-March when we realized that we were going to have to cancel all in-person services and activities at church, effective immediately. We had hoped maybe that would be just for a short time. We had hoped that we'd be back in church for Easter. It didn't happen. Lois and I were planning to visit our, our daughter and our grandchildren. We had hoped to fly to New York right after Easter. It didn't happen. So many other hopes. Students who had hoped to celebrate their graduation from high school or college. Young men and women who had hoped to be celebrating their wedding this spring or summer. And for some, it's even more serious those who had hoped to finally become financially secure only to lose their jobs, those who had hoped to enjoy a, a comfortable retirement only to see their investments plummet, and of course, those who had hoped that they would not personally be touched by this virus, only to find themselves or their loved ones sick and perhaps dying. Truth be told, the dashing of human hopes happens quite regularly in our lives. Even in ordinary times, we, we hope for things and we're disappointed. What has it been for you in your life? Maybe it was a job that you wanted but didn't get, or, or a job that you got and then found out it really wasn't what you wanted after all. Maybe it was a, a child for whom you had such hopes, but who got off track somehow or just took a different road than you anticipated. Maybe it was a marriage or other relationship that you had hoped would last forever, and it just didn't. Disappointments, small and large, they're part and parcel of human life. 
But what these disciples on the road to Emmaus cannot see, and what we so often cannot see, is that the Lord himself is walking with them. St. Augustine, commenting on this passage, puts it this way, their hopes are dead, but Christ is alive. And slowly, patiently, Jesus diagnoses their problem. How slow of heart you are to believe. Now let's unpack that just a bit. You know, in the Christian vocabulary, faith means trust. In other words, just about any time the Bible mentions faith, you could substitute the word trust and, and you'll get a very clear idea of what it's talking about. The word Jesus uses here, believe, is really in Greek just the verb form of faith. So what he's saying is that they are slow of heart to trust. And that's precisely their problem. Slow of heart. These disciples are trying to figure it all out, and it doesn't make any sense to them because they're trying to use their minds, their reason, their understanding, rather than their heart. And faith, trust, hope is a movement of the heart. It's not a function of the intellect. Think for a moment about your best friend or, or any close friend. Suppose someone said to you, why is that person your friend? What would you say? Well, he's nice. Well, lots of people are nice. Well, she and I have a lot in common. Well, good for you, but that doesn't necessarily make for a friend. No, the relationship with a friend is not one that you can logically explain. Rather, it comes from the heart. The French philosopher Pascal put it this way, the heart has its reasons which reason does not know. And the same is true of our friend Jesus. Faith in Christ is trust. It is a movement of the heart. And so what about hope? Well, in the Christian vocabulary, again, I, I like to think of hope as the future tense of faith. And so the future tense of trust. To hope is to trust God, not just for today in the present, but in the future and for the future. And when these Emmaus Road disciples say, we had hoped, they are revealing that their hopes were only human hopes. They were not the kind of hope that we have in Christ. In Christ, we have, as Peter says in our second lesson today, faith and hope that are set on God. It's a hope that makes, that takes our, our present faith and pushes it into the future. And like our present faith, that future hope is really just trust. It is the trust that says, I know not what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. It's the trust that says with Job, I know that my Redeemer lives, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. It is the trust that affirms with Augustine, their hopes are dead, but Christ is alive. Their, their human hopes, their rational hopes, their earthly hopes are dead in that moment, but Christ is alive, walking beside them, even though they do not recognize him. And they may be slow of heart to trust him, but he is there nonetheless, right beside them. I have preached on this passage so many times over the years, and I'm always drawn especially to the end of it, where they ask him to stay with them and have dinner, and when he breaks the bread, their eyes are opened and they recognize him. You know, Christians have always seen that as a reference to the way that Christ opens our eyes in the breaking of the bread at the Eucharist and, and how in the Lord's Supper we recognize him. That part of the text is a little painful at this moment since we cannot share that meal with him. And yet I take comfort in what these disciples say next after Jesus vanishes from their sight, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, 
while he was opening the scriptures to us. Christ comes to us in many ways. We cannot gather for his supper, but he still comes to us in his word. He opens the scriptures to us and opens our hearts, our slow hearts, our often resistant hearts. He talks to us on the road, even this difficult road we're traveling right now. He speaks to our confusion, our, our muddled minds, our sadness, our fear. Oh, how foolish you are, he says. And I think he says that with an affectionate smile. How foolish and how slow of heart to trust. And our hearts burn within us. I've thought often in these weeks about that beautiful collect in the Book of Common Prayer, Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you've given us in our Savior Jesus Christ. In these difficult days, you see, Christ continues to give us the bread of life. For in his word, we find food indeed, food which we can inwardly digest, food which enables us to embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. That is where we find the hope that is greater and truer than all those earthly human things that we had hoped. Perhaps you, like me, have been reading the Gospel of Matthew this Easter season, as our bishop has invited us to do. I believe it was last Sunday we were reading the Sermon on the Mount, the part where Jesus tells his disciples not to be anxious, that if God feeds the ravens and clothes the lilies of the field, he will surely take care of us as well. And it called to my mind a wonderful hymn by William Cooper, one of the earliest romantic poets in England. Cooper was in many ways a tragic figure. He suffered from what we would probably call today manic depression, and often his life felt like he was in darkness, like he was in a prison. And yet he survived by a remarkable trust in God. And the words that he wrote that came to my mind this week go like this. Sometimes a light surprises the Christian while he sings. It is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. When comforts are declining, he gives the soul again a season of clear shining to cheer it after rain. In holy contemplation, we sweetly then pursue the theme of God's salvation and find it ever new, set free from present sorrow, we cheerfully can say, let the unknown tomorrow bring with it what it may. It can bring with it nothing, but God will bear us through. Who gives the lilies clothing will clothe his people too. Beneath the spreading heavens, no creature but is fed. And he who feeds the ravens will give his children bread. The vine and fig tree, neither their wanted fruit should bear. Though all the fields should wither, nor flocks nor herds be there, yet God the same abideth. His praise shall tune my voice, for while in him confiding I cannot but rejoice. Dear people of God, Christ is walking with you, opening your hearts, inviting you to set your faith, your hope, your trust on him, on him who abides with you always, our hope is built on nothing less. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us join together, proclaiming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the prayers of the people, let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, return soon to our traditional worship practices as a community, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in looking for solutions and not blame, and in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially during this time when we're separated for the common good and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit due to this pandemic, the current social isolation, or any other source of affliction. Especially comfort and protect those whose lives are dedicated to healing the afflicted. Give them all courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Peace. peace, everybody. Peace be peace. with you. Peace be with you all. Uh, God bless you, and thank you for joining us on this third Sunday of Easter. We are just so pleased that you were here to celebrate the joy of the resurrection with us. And uh, give thanks to God that we can be gathered e even when we are in this uh, season of social distancing. I thank God that we can gather to worship together even at such great distances. And so thank you for continuing to be committed to worshiping the Lord during this time. Thank you for continuing to make that a priority in your life, and we are all blessed by your commitment. Uh, thank you as well for your generosity and your continued faithfulness to the church and to the Lord's mission. Uh, as always, you can, if you would like to make a donation to the church, uh, go to our church website, www.emmanuelgv. Dot org, and there is an opportunity to donate online. In addition, there at the website, you'll find details on all the different ways you can connect with the ministries of the church. We have Bible studies going on twice a week. We are studying the Gospel of Matthew right now uh, with our whole diocese, and our discussions at our Bible studies will be focused around the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, we have, in addition, uh, this last Thursday, we have just started up our healing service again. And so please join us this coming Thursday at 10 in the morning for the healing service. Uh, it's a great way to come and to lift up our prayers to God, particularly in this season when so many need healing, uh, to remember them in our prayers. It's a real blessing and an opportunity we as Christians have and an obligation we as Christians have to pray for one another and to pray for the needs of the world. So thank you for taking part in that. It will be over Zoom, and details can be found on our website about how to connect. All right, and now we are going to take this opportunity to pray for those who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries. Uh, please join with me as we pray. Lord God, thank you for the gift and blessing of life. Lord, thank you for the way that you uh, bring people into this world and you bless us through them, the way that you use people to encourage us and to challenge us and to cause us to grow and to bless us. And we pray for all those who are celebrating birthdays. May your strength, your peace, your, your growth, and your love fill them up, Lord God. May your encouragement be with them. And we pray that you would uphold them and strengthen them for the work that is ahead. And for this next year, may it be filled with great joy and blessing. We pray for those who are celebrating anniversaries. May you encourage them in their love for one another. May they, um, may they love sacrificially and with hearts filled with joy and with humility and with grace. And we pray for your blessing upon their marriages, Lord. And we pray this all in Jesus' holy name. Amen let us come to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in the sacrament of the Eucharist. We love you above all things, and we long to receive the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Since we cannot presently receive you in your sacrament, come spiritually into our hearts. Grant to us in due season and according to your great kindness, so again to share in the celebration and to receive the sacrament of your body and blood that we may know the joy of being fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Until that time, nourish us with your word, strengthen our faith, and conform our lives to yours. Bless us and your whole church as we pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. 
Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>